Hello everyone. Hello everyone. It's Monica Vide. Welcome to episode 3 of Powered by Hope. So glad you're here. I'm looking forward to talking to you today about our topic which is called the secret ingredient. And don't worry, I'm actually going to tell you what the secret ingredient is, unlike some movie people who say there is no secret ingredient to life. But before we go on to the the topic of the day, I do want to talk to you a little bit about what's happening with the pandemic and what's going on. I've been talking to a lot of friends about, you know, let's just everybody try to be normal and just do the best you can. And, you know, it's okay, whatever's happening, it's okay now. And there's a lot of resistance in that. Do you, do you sense it even in my voice as I talk? I think one of the most important things to do right now is to first of all, accept the fact that things are not normal pandemic is not normal and trying to behave like it is a normal everyday regular thing while we go do our regular you know things and go around with our regular lives it's unrealistic because it sets us up you know i'm not saying watch cnn 24 7 or any other news channel or you know facebook or things like that i'm not saying oh my god you gotta face reality it's nothing like that it's just We need to just accept the situation for what it is. It's a difficult time in the world. The energy is heavy. It's hard. Nobody really knows yet where we're going and how we're going to deal with this. There's uncertainty, certainty, and that's it. That's the acceptance. There's nothing in there about if I accept it, does that mean that I'm giving up and I'm quitting and what's going to happen and have I given up on life? No, 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 nothing like that. We have frontline heroes who are saving lives. We have scientists who are creating this, who are creating vaccines. There's so much good in this world. But you know, they say what we resist persists. So let's not resist. Let's just come out and say, you know what? It's a really difficult time. It really sucks. If you want to have a good cry, you want to bang on a couple of pillows, you want to throw the heart at the wall safely, go ahead and do it. Get it out of your system. Let's just accept. So now let me talk to you a little bit about what the secret ingredient is in our lives. And I'm going to use um, a simple little story, something that happened to me many, many years ago. I think like, oh, you know, she's going to talk about food and cooking when I start this story. And it may seem like I should have picked like something really much more dire to bring the point across. But I think there's enough dire in the news, don't you? So... You know, a few years ago, I was struggling to write my first novel. I didn't know, I felt I didn't know how to write. I didn't know how to create characters. I didn't know how to build an arc. I didn't know how to do anything. And I had all these books lying around on how to write a novel. I had taken classes. I have friends who are New York Times bestselling authors who were willing to help me. But I had this belief that I could not write a novel and I was really struggling, really struggling. And you know what struggling writers generally do is procrastinate by doing something else. So I decided to watch TV. And as I was uh, flipping around on the TV channels, I came across a show that was based in India. It's a reality cooking show where they were looking for India's best home cook. No two of the leading judges. One is Chef Sanjeev Kapoor, who's got like, I don't know, 500 million viewers, if not more amazing, amazing chef. And second one was Chef Vikas Khanna, who was many years ago voted as one of the most, I think, hottest chefs in New York City. Uh, it is one of the most, I think, hottest chefs in New York City. Um, he is, he's an amazing chef with tens of millions of followers on Twitter. He's got several cooking shows. So both very, very accomplished men. They were the judges. I have the the honor of calling them my friends. So I thought, okay, I need to watch this. I know the two of them. And it just kind of instant. Now the show had the usual suspects as contestants. You know, there was a housewife, a handsome young kid, a cooking teacher, a caterer. But the person on the show who really caught my eye was a young woman named Koku. Now let me tell you why. A very slight young woman, um, 
obviously came from a very economically challenged background. She was someone's maid. So if you if you know anything about India or some of the Eastern countries, you'll know that people have maids that cook for them and clean for them and things like that. And she was one of those uh, those folks. And they the family had actually sent her information into the show because she was such a good cook. And and so I'm watching her on screen, and you can tell, you know, she's very uncomfortable. I mean, who wouldn't be if you're standing on a stage where you know, you're looking at Sanjeev and Vikas and all these other luminaries who've cooked for kings and queens and, you know, all kinds of presidents and prime ministers and then there's prime ministers and then there's this young woman. So she caught my eye and I was sort of watching her through the show. And then what happened um, with her and the challenges sort of really helped me change my view of my world and the insecurities that I was feeling. So the first contest asked the contestants to make a pizza. They said, can you make a pizza, make it in a skillet and make sure it has some Indian flavors. And everybody rushed to make their pizza. And this young woman was just standing there. And the judges, you know, I think asked her what happened. And she said, well, I've never actually tasted a pizza. Pizza comes to the house when the, where I work, the kids order it, they eat it. I've never had a pizza. I don't know what it's supposed to taste like. So how am I supposed to cook it? So they gave her a slice of pizza and they she tasted it. And then she created a pizza and she passed that round with flying colors. I remember Vikas handing her a slice of pizza, a slice of pizza. The second thing that she did, which was incredible, was that one of the challenges was using liquid nitrogen. And I remember they gave the, the contestants a sheet of paper with the recipe on it and the liquid nitrogen and told them to go. And again, she was just standing there. And when I talked to some of my friends who were judges, I was like, what was happening there? Why did you guys go and talk to her when you gave her the liquid nitrogen? I thought maybe they're talking to her because, you know, liquid nitrogen, I don't know how to use it. Somebody would have to tell me what to do. And they said, no, 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 you don't understand. It was a sheet of paper. She doesn't know how to read or write. But she was there, but she was there. They had to they had to explain the recipe to her because she cannot read. Everybody else read the piece of paper and went to work and they told her what to do. So here was this amazing, creative, wonderful, beautiful woman whom I think Chef Sanjeev said to her on the show that she showed that she shouldn't be competing, but she should be teaching other chefs how to cook. Imagine how good she was. And I watched the whole show with her and it really made me, you know, sort of sit back and reflect to say, you know, imagine the amount of confidence this woman had in her abilities to be there, right? She had to show up, could compete, that she could stand on the stage with these amazing, literate, famous, accomplished, luminary chefs and be okay, right? But there was a secret ingredient. And that's what we're going to talk about in our meditation. So the next meditation is is less of a traditional. So the next meditation is is less of a traditional meditation and a little bit of an exercise. So if you need to pause for a second to get yourself in a comfortable place, this is a place to do it. We're going to do a little exercise. So we're going to be less clearing our mind and more thinking about something. That's the best way that I can put it. And the secret ingredient was that she had, and that made her successful and how we can apply it, okay? So pause here, if you wanna go make yourself comfortable, then come right back, and we're going to do this little meditation exercise that I've created for you guys. Okay, ready? What I want you to do is just sit in a comfortable position, and just relax, relax, let go of all the tension in your shoulders, just unclench your face, Remove your tongue from the roof of your mouth if that's what you're doing. Most of us do that. that's what you're doing. Most of us do that when we're tense. Make sure your forehead's not tense. Face is relaxed. Relax your back, your chest, your abdomen. Relax your legs, arms, feet. Just take a big deep breath. Hold and release. Take another deep breath, big deep breath, and 
release. And one more. Big deep breath. And hold. And release. Okay. So now imagine that you're in a place this young woman was where you have to bring your best game, right? You got to bring in things about you that are the difference in you that make the difference. What are you going to show up with? Tell me, is it resilience, creativity, resilience, creativity? Are you just a badass? Are you the eternal optimist? Are you a fighter? Are you a warrior? What are you? What are the qualities about you that distinguish you from everybody else in that room? You're cheerful. Think about four things about you that you absolutely love, like she did. She was a creative chef. She had amazing amounts of confidence in herself. She knew she could outcook that entire room. Those were her skills. What are you bringing? What are you bringing? Confidence, creativity, resilience, optimism. Think about it. Come up with four things. Okay? All right. Now we're going to talk about the secret ingredient. You ready? The secret ingredient is whatever that you feel you don't have, the universe will provide. See, when this young woman was on stage, it made me realize she could have given into the fear of, I don't know how to read or write. Oh my God, how am I going to go on the stage? The universe provided. One of the leading chefs in the world stood next to her and read her the recipe. She didn't need it. She was competing against people who've gone to schools and colleges and all of this stuff. She didn't need it. Chef Sanjeev stood there and told her in front of millions and hundreds and millions of people that she, in fact, was the real teacher and she shouldn't even be competing. She could teach other people how to cook. See, when we think of the universe, people usually either just jump to religion or something else. But you know what? The universe is us. It's all of us. We're all connected. So the idea is you bring your best game, this game, and the universe will provide everything else, whether it's Someone to read something to you, someone to show you the way, someone to shine a spotlight on you. Even luck, that is the secret ingredient. And hey, if you believe you're lucky, you are. And if you believe you're not, it's what? So yeah, the secret ingredient, ask the universe for it. Say, I've shown up, I'm resilient, I'm amazing, I'm creative, this is what I can do. How are you going to support me? And watch the magic happen. I promise you, never fails. I love fails. I love you guys so much for being here. Thank you for being so supportive of this podcast, for listening, for sharing with your friends. You know, it's it's a difficult time. Everywhere the energy is low. And I think the best thing we can do is realize we're all in this together. Every one of us is a reflection of the other person. So let's accept where we are and bring our best game to this reality show of a world that we have right now and know that whatever else we need, the universe will provide. Thank you so much for joining me on Powered by Hope. This is your host, Monica Vidae. I love you guys. Until next time.